This video is brought to you by Squarespace. On the 12th of February 2007, a absolutely iconic skateboarding video part was released by the name of Colorado. Do it! Why are you do that? This three minute video would show the world a combination of parkour and skateboarding unlike anything we've ever seen before. Or really have ever seen since. This video featured a young man by the name of William Spencer and would be the start of a very wild journey, eventually leading him to being a stuntman in major blockbuster films. In today's video, we will explore the crazy story of William Spencer. William Spencer grew up in Texas, born in 1984. He grew up just southeast of Dallas in a very quiet neighborhood. From a young age, William spent most of his time hanging out of trees and jumping on trampolines. And if he wasn't hanging off of a tree by one leg, he'd be in his room playing with his toys, creating these action scenes like what he saw in the movie. People would be like, all right, so uh, you got homework tonight. And I remember as a kid with no outside influence being like, no, player, you got eight hours out of me today. I'll be back tomorrow. You can have another eight, but I'm, I have to go home and not do this. Live now. my life. Yeah. yeah. William was obsessed with action films. He particularly loved Jackie Chan and always looked up to him. Pretty much, William was just a happy child who liked being creative. However, around the age of nine or ten, William would make a decision that would completely change the course of his life. You see, William was the younger brother to Shad Spencer. Shad was a few years older than him and at the time had just gotten into skateboarding. However, living in the middle of nowhere, it was kind of hard for Shad to find people to skate with. He made me make skateboard videos with him. Mm, you know, yeah, right. like he yeah, was yeah. like, you're going to film a section. And I was like, I don't really, well, I guess. <laughs> and you would think William being the fearless kid who liked jumping out of trees and doing flips off his trampoline, you'd think skateboarding would just come naturally. However, this wasn't the case. Yeah, I don't think you should never do that again. Skateboarding was like mind-blowingly scary to me. Not feeling getting smoked, you know? <laughs> like you're like, dude, I'm trying to be comfy and cozy and have sleepovers. I'm not trying to like get murdered. Yeah. As he grew up and he would surround himself by these skaters who push themselves through fear every day, to William, he would see this as like an aspirational trait. The ability to just silence the voice in your head saying, don't do this and just go for it. I was so inspired where I was like, I just knew I was like, I am not very good at this or I have skills that are entirely not in this realm, but I like you and I'm gonna figure this out. Do it! Skateboarding to William became this avenue for him to push himself through fear and to overcome these limiting beliefs he had of himself. Like a cattle guard, you know, like horses and cows could just jump that, but there's something scary. That feeling, right? You just have to push yourself as hard as you can every day. Let's just see what happens if you push yourself as hard as you can. Let's just see. Before we continue, a massive thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you're looking to build a high quality professional website for your business, your brand, whatever, Squarespace has you covered. What makes Squarespace so good is that it's so intuitive and easy to use. With endless templates to choose from and a ton of additional features, why would you not use Squarespace? It's, it's honestly the best platform I've ever used for making a website. It's affordable and it's very simple to use. You don't need to be an expert. You can just pick it up and figure it out pretty quickly. It has built-in things like e-commerce, appointment booking, members-only content, and lots more. You can really just do it all within Squarespace and you don't have to hire someone to do it. So be sure to head over to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, use the code Jimmy the Giant. Anyway, back to the video. His older brother Shad had actually become a very well-respected skateboarder. <laughs> Me. But it was around 2005 when a very important video would be released. Now this video was released for Advocate Skateboards. And in this video we would see Shad doing some cool stuff. I mean he was a good skater. But it wasn't Shad that stood out in this video. Someone else definitely stole the show. And that someone was William Spencer. I was just sad to have won that war with myself 
fear-wise, because it terrified me to make that video part. I was scared the whole time. My accomplishment unto myself, I was like, oh my gosh, this doesn't entirely suck. This is incredible. <laughs> William's approach to skateboarding was unlike anything anyone had ever seen. Starting his line off of a skateboard, or, or using two skateboards, or doing a front flip off of a mattress and then landing on a skateboard. That's not what people do, but here William was doing it. William had found a way of taking what was unique about him and bringing it to the world of skateboarding. Bearing in mind this was 2005 where a lot of America wouldn't know what parkour was at this point. And one of those people was William Spencer. Parkour, I didn't own a computer. I didn't know that it was a thing yet. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because Daniel told me, he's like, you clearly train. And I was all, what do you mean? William had just naturally found himself wanting to do stunts like Jackie Chan. Being from a background of like, and by background, I just mean what my tastes are. Because I just love movies and I just like entertaining people They're like hand to mouth i just want people to not be bored and like just be intrigued by it to be someone who just enters a sport and sees how everyone does it and then decides to do it a completely different way takes an extremely special individual it's like imagine i went to go play a game of badminton and i decided to take a baseball bat that's how weird it would have looked like to other skateboarders when they saw william doing what he was doing yeah, i got an idea what if i put a skateboard at the bottom and then i and they would be like I can, sure dude, sure. <laughs> but anyway, after all of these crazy clips, the video would finish with one final clip. William would launch himself down 10 steps, do a front flip, and then land on a skateboard. Well, he would try to land on a skateboard. And he takes slam after slam, and then the video's over. William didn't land that final trick. I'll celebrate just like having tried it. I'm like, we're going to Korean barbecue. We, because they're just so scary, you know? They're just like so mind-bogglingly like, it's so stressful, you know? Time would pass after the release of Burning Light. A man by the name of Michael Burnett, who at the time was like the highest person up in Frasher. William had found out that Michael had watched Burning Daylight. He saw what I was trying to do, Michael Burnett did, and he's like, dude, tell your friend that if he can land that front flip down the set on the skateboard, I'll give him a spread and thrasher. I'll give him an interview. Wow. This one sentence set William off on a mission. Six or so full sessions of around two to three hours each, William would keep revisiting the front flip, taking slam after slam. If you're like, you walk with a limp, you know? And it was from that, just murdering my ankle that many times. However, on February 12th, 2007, the world would see something incredible. A video uploaded to the Denver Shop YouTube channel under the name Colorado. Colorado is just one of them videos. A video to me that represents an era in my life and just pop culture in general. This whole video is just full of iconic moments. The car slides, switching boards, the skateboard arm jump to a fence, and then finally William lands the front flip to a skateboard. Uh, that was a big motivation to have that. And sure enough, and then the spread came out and... Full spread and thrashing. Yeah, it was, very, it was very cool. As you would expect, when this video was released, it sent shockwaves around the skateboarding world. Not only to launch a front flip down 10 steps, but to land precisely on a skateboard. All the way back in 2007, flip precisions in the world of parkour didn't really appear until like the 2010s. But there was William rolling away from a trick would define his whole career. I was thinking to myself, man, I can't do a crazier like regular skateboard trick, but I can do flips totally. and I can jump to a skateboard probably. That was the simple math of it. It wasn't like, ooh, this will be revolutionary. I was thinking, this won't be terrible. Yeah. You know, like this won't be <laughs> crummy, I hope. For as much praise as William was getting, this didn't come without a fair share of haters. You should be well-rounded. You can do all the crazy stuff, but you need to make sure that you can do these tricks. But you see, William was just having fun, being himself, and doing things to entertain and put a smile on people's faces. For him to receive that kind of feedback from the world of skateboarding was kind of upsetting. I realized so quickly, it was such a, a volatile point to sort of 
be on because skateboarding is so beloved. I was like, you guys, this is, you guys have no idea how much work it took to not suck. Much less you <laughs> then looking at the product going, you didn't do it right. I'm like, yeah, but I did something that wasn't terrible. Yeah. Like I, it blew my mind that people were so upset at me for what would be the future. Which leads us to 2009 with a video titled In Color. Oh, you're a legit skater and you don't like circus tricks? Oh, well. I was in California at this point, sleeping on a couch. My roommate called me in his room. He's like, hey, man, have you seen this? And I was like, hey that that's me on the internet he's like yeah that's a lot of views i'm like like it matters i'm on a couch i don't sleep in a car now what do i care william was undeterred to show the world his unique view of skateboarding in this video we see not only has william's skateboarding leveled up his creativity leveled up but more interestingly his parkour had leveled up you see, it was around this time in 2009 where william had taken trips to the uk where he had met up and trained with some absolute legends of parkour. And us as the parkour world would see William pop up in these videos. All of these videos are now considered like the classic golden era parkour footage. And William's trips to the UK would spark lifelong friendships. I always personally just love seeing William in these parkour videos because he was so clearly a skateboarder and not a free runner. Just down to what you were wearing, they were all wearing like baggy yeah. joggers, kalenjis, and you were in like your jeans and like your skate shoes. And I remember at the time, it was like, he is so clearly not a free runner. Despite being awesome at it, the other thing of like yelling and like hyping yourself up. Yeah. But if, if you're at a parkour session doing that, you'd be like, what the f is that guy doing? Like, just yeah. chill out. Like, Danny move. One Son of a important sound we ah! wanted you to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And I found that so fascinating. It was like, you were <laughs> so clearly from a different culture. <laughs> But yet, despite his unorthodox approach to even parkour, he would still keep up with these legends of parkour. You know, you watch Die Hard and you're like, this guy's got no shoes on and he's balding. This guy's not going to make it. But you also kept watching, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like, oh, this dude is not at all equipped. And I really had some sort of pride in making people feel like they could do it. In these trips, William would gain a deep respect for the parkour world. As previously, he was just really trying to do what Jackie Chan was doing. He didn't know about the parkour world and its culture. And he would gain a particular respect for Daniel Ilabaka. When I met Daniel and I saw his consistency level completely out, like just blew my mind with that. From that moment on, I started practicing where Daniel would be like, no dude, you should just do it because you want to do it. Like don't film it, do it because it's awesome. That I, from that moment on, I started practicing my consistency with things. Across the years, we would see more and more videos of William doing parkour with these free runners. And at the same time, William had moved to LA to pursue a career as a stuntman in the movie business. As all the while, his videos were amassing millions of views on YouTube. And lots of people were starting to recognize his very unique skill set. He would get hired to do stunts in Alvin and the Chipmunks, CSI New York, Project X, and quite a few others. However, for William, there was one film that would be the absolute dream to appear in, and that was The Amazing Spider-Man. One day, William had received word that they were auditioning for the new Spider-Man. Immediately, William's ears perked up. He sent over his showreel, etc., trying to get an audition for Spider-Man. Weeks passed, and he heard nothing. That was until one day where William received a phone call. Hello, is that William Spencer? Oh, are you guys calling me to let me know when the audition is? They're like, no, we're calling you from the audition. Will you be coming in today? It's because they emailed me to tell me when the audition was. And of course me, I was like, just call me like a regular person. Yes. In real life, please. Anyway, so I completely missed the audition. No. And they give me the like, ah, dude, it's fine. You'll get the next one. And I was like, I don't think you get the next one on when it's a Spider-Man. I don't think you do. I think I blew it. But then one day, something strange happened. Andrew Garfield, who played Spider-Man, approached the stunt people that had been hired there. That he was scouring the internet and he was like, you guys, I got to tell you that for this character I've been researching and I really think it'd be really cool 
if if Peter Parker was a skateboarder. And I know it's kind of late in the game, but I've been kind of researching people I think would be cool to do that. And so he pulls up my video at some point at lunchtime and he's like, like this guy, look, this is how Spider-Man would skateboard. No way. And Ilram looks over and he's all, yeah, I tried to get him to the audition. He, he blew it. <laughs> And it was just a crazy, weirdly fortuitous thing where Elrond's like, yeah, if you want that guy, I'll call him right now. He'll be here in 30 minutes, Meant whatever. So somehow William had just completely wangled his way on set and was now stunting Spider-Man, a special request from Andrew Garfield. And apparently Andrew Garfield was so taken by William that people on set had noticed that Andrew had started taking on William's mannerisms in the role of Spider-Man. But I just know that from friends of mine that were on the set, a lot of them like to allude to the fact that they feel like Andrew was copying your mannerisms. Dude. Well, what's... To, yeah. be a, to be the character. He has this very kind of... This very teenage mood as him, which I wanted to kind of steal. It was deeply flattering. Um, but at that time, I was like slightly less comfortable with myself than I am now. So, of course, I was like, shut up. That's a stupid idea. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't say it like that. William's stunt work in The Amazing Spider-Man had definitely solidified his career in the film world. He would stunt The Amazing Spider-Man 2. He would go on to do Cobra Kai, Walking Dead, Tenor, and a ton of other films. For this young skater who never wanted to be put in a box, forced to do things a certain way, who had dropped out of college and was forced to find his own way through life. He delved so deeply into the things that were just naturally enjoyable for him. He would follow his passions as and when they came, leading to these incredible experiences and memories, revolutionizing skateboarding, and eventually stunted Spider-Man. After the tragic passing of William's dad, this sent William into a deep sadness. That when he got sick with cancer, I like, I was like, mic drop in LA. It affected me so much to watch him go from being totally fine to becoming a skeleton in front of me. He didn't particularly understand me at all. I was so certain he didn't understand me, but his ability to love beyond that and just be like, dude, I just freaking like you. Like, I don't mm. like you're an alien to me, but let's do this. Awesome. Like just that alone, like that lesson for like whoever. So cool, dude. It just makes me want to mm. be like that. There was like a blank spot in my life of like, I don't know what else to do mm. anymore with anything. I'm about to make him proud or die. Let's do it. Damn. Yeah. For the last four or five years, William has been working on this skate park. He has been teasing it for so long. Like the first I heard of it was in a podcast about a year and a bit ago. And do you know who Richie Jackson is? Yeah, yeah. But from his perspective, he's like, wow, this is a true evolution. This is the best thing that you have ever made. And I'm like, Sick. thank God that's <laughs> not me saying that. It's gonna be released on Thrasher magazine. William has also spoke about how he wants to make more and more films himself, like directing and filming them. So I personally just cannot wait to see the future of this man's creations. William's way of just thinking outside of the box and refusing the constraints that people put on him has always been a massive inspiration to me. I really can't wait to see what the future holds for William Spencer. We love you, William. Keep doing what you do. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I've just released a new line of clothes and there's a ton of merchandise on jimmythegiant.co.uk. You can massively help support what I do by picking something up there, using the sponsored link below or supporting me on Patreon. Peace.